sending waves now. This may look like a complicated operation, but for the folks at this Oregon State Lab, the end result is simple. They make waves. What actually is a wave? So that's a deep question. Like, you know, you know, no pun intended at the water, but, but uh, <laughs> so an ocean wave is actually is sort of a relay race with all these water particles that are all handing their energy one to the next to the next. And so you're seeing this relay race of energy. Uh, so this is the wave maker for the large wave flume. And it's a hydraulically actuated system in which following a computer program, the panel moves back and forth, pushing and pulling on the surface of the water to create this rich harmonic content that we see in actual ocean waves. For the past week, OSU researchers like Ted Brecken have been testing the lab version of a device that will try to harness wave energy. Inside, there's a pendulum. Uh, just like uh, if you've seen self-winding watches, there's a pendulum that rotates as it moves and we use that to produce electricity. And where does the energy from waves originally come from? The sun. The, wave, the energy in the waves come from the sun. So we have uneven heating of the surface of the earth, which drives the wind, and the wind blows across the surface of the water, which creates waves. And so there's energy in those waves, and what we're looking to do is convert some of that to electricity. The ocean is powerful. So powerful that if we could harness all of the wave energy along the U.S. coastline, we could meet 64% of the nation's energy needs each year. But the ocean is also destructive, which makes actually harnessing that power all the more challenging. But there are plenty of creative ideas. Some look like snakes. Others work like dams on the ocean floor. Still others resemble hulking farm implements. What are you gonna do with this guy? sit out here in the, on the rack and uh, show it off, maybe send it to the Smithsonian at some point. Um, cool, it's uh, some yeah. garden art. Wave energy is really on the cusp. It's really at an inflection point from a commercialization standpoint. It's kind of like the old Betamax versus VHS, you know, which is the better technology. Um, one will eventually win out. So Reen Lensman is the CEO of Sea Power a renewable energy company in Corvallis that's actually trying to scale this technology out of the lab and into the real world. What is the reason that wave energy is 20 years behind wind and also behind solar? Yeah, not that wind is easy, not that solar is easy, but the ocean presents a unique challenge. It's an incredibly energetic resource. It's much more energetic than wind or, or the sun actually is from an energy density perspective. It's, it's irregular from wave to wave, and so you have to create a system that is tolerant of that irregularity. Currently, Sea Power has a few prototypes that are trying to do just that use the chaotic motion of the ocean to spin a turbine and make electricity. Part of the issue with wave energy is that as opposed to a wind turbine, which is spinning in one direction all the time, wave energy, you go from basically forward to back or up to down. Because that's one of the things that makes it really difficult is how do you deal with that back and forth motion? So part of the trick for us is turning those two linear forces, the heave and the surge of a wave, then turn it into rotational motion. So you've been doing a lot of lab testing. How is that different from actually putting one of these devices in the ocean? Going in the ocean is expensive and it's time consuming. We can iterate very rapidly with lab testing. And so it's a big step. But it's a step some scientists are now taking, starting with PacWave South in Oregon one of the first testing sites to be connected to a local power grid. So everything that's happening here today is basically just to lay some tables under the ocean. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That sounds simple, but apparently it's not. What, what's the word, Dan? It's, it's not complicated, but it's really hard to do. Yeah. Earlier this summer, workers started laying transmission lines along the Oregon coastline. When PacWave South, a partnership between Oregon State and the Department of Energy, is complete, inventors will be able to test their prototypes in the open ocean. So if I'm understanding correctly, you're not actually building any of the devices that would harvest wave energy. So what are you doing? 
we're basically building the, the playing field, the competition arena for the folks that do that work. So we're providing the licensed access to the transmission infrastructure to the power conversion and conditioning to attach that power to the grid. So is that indicative of just how early we are in this process? Yeah, absolutely. Right, we, We're just now breaking ground for the quote unquote stadium. It's amazing to me that that's the case, given the fact that waves have always been here and everybody knows about the power of the wa of waves in the ocean. Yeah, no, that's true. And we've known for a long time that there's power in the waves. What everyone has to remember is that there's no single renewable that can give us 100%. So you need some energy sources that are producing when others are not. And so the, the wave energy produces even if the, it doesn't have anything to do with whether the sun is shining or not. What's your hope for wave energy, big picture? We would hope that in 20 years, people are starting to deploy wave energy devices for remote communities that, that, some, that in many cases rely on uh, import of diesel, right, to run generators through the, through the winter months when the sun's not shining. And so that's what we would hope. At the Department of Energy, Folks like Tim Ramsey are pushing to accelerate wave energy through R&D grants and large capital projects, like PacWave South. But the clock is ticking if ambitious renewable energy goals are to be met. We keep hearing from people in this industry that wave energy is where wind and solar were 20 years ago. But 20 years from now, like, we'll all be even more screwed <laughs> than we are now, right? I mean, this yeah. the climate crisis is accelerating, so... Right. What does that mean for the development? Don't, do we need to move faster? Yes, we do need to move faster. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with just how expensive it, it is to test, how expensive it, it is to iterate on those designs and uh, to prove out the technology. You really want to be able to test quickly and, and really throw what you can at and see what works and what doesn't and what breaks. And that's the same thing with PacWave South. Um, that's one of the most energetic spots on the West Coast. And when built, that will be the most energetic test facility in the world. Even if some of the projects that you fund don't work, that's not a sign that you're not doing the right thing, right? Right, right. And I think that if the U.S. does not try to support the marine energy industry and have that be an option on, on the table, I think it will really hurt us in the long run. The oceans are relentless. The tides are relentless. Um, they are going to be there for, for as long as the earth is here. So if we don't try to capture that, I, I think we're missing out on a big opportunity. 